Okay, this video demonstrates a bunch of short rebel code examples. Uh, you can see the link here. Um, download the rebel interpreter by going to rebel.com at the link at the top of that text, and you can find the common operating system supported. Um, newer versions of rebel also support uh, things like Android and um, Raspberry Pi. Uh, but we're going to use the old Rebel version 2, uh, which you get directly from rebel.com. And if you download that interpreter, run it. The very first time you run it, you'll see a desktop that looks like this. You can get to the console by clicking that icon, and uh, you can paste in most of these examples directly into the console. Um, or you can save the examples to a text file. Any text file that has the name uh, or, or a name with .r uh, as the extension will run as if it's a um, executable file in Rebel once you install Rebel. But you don't need to install Rebel. You can paste these things directly in to the interpreter. Uh, here I have it running first example is running as a text file in uh, Metapad. Let's see, I put that on my desktop. Save that as test.r on my desktop. This little example is a two-line program. It lets you play the typical sliding tile puzzle. Uh, you can also take uh, this code, and if you want, if you type in editor and then quotation marks at the rebel prompt or editor none, any of these things will bring up the blank rebel built-in text editor. You can save the file, uh, whatever name you want, and then press the F5 key on your keyboard and the program will run. And uh, since rebel runs on uh, basically every desktop operating system and all sorts of legacy operating systems, um, you don't need to have any other text editor or any other IDE to run any of the examples. Um, this little example is a, uh, a text editor itself. I just type in some code, and save that code or text, any sort of text to the file, and load it. So just like that. It's a good basic little text editor that you can create just from this four lines of code. Uh, here's a little to-do list example. Um, this uses a GUI text list. And uh, that's what it looks like. You can type in any items you want. And if you want to uh, delete items in the list, just click. You can save your list. Saves it by default uh, to a text file there. You can also load. If you run that again, you can load that in a time and it will bring it back. This was originally created as a shopping list, so let's call that to do. Okay. Um, this little example takes one line of data builds a GUI. In Rebel, you'll see the code that creates a GUI is called view layout. It builds this little layout, which we're calling G, and uh, basically creates a little graphic uh, bar chart. Use that code to create bar charts with any data that you put in this, in this variable D. There's a little Madlib Maker program. And you can use any text of your own. Um, let's put that into a, uh, uh, a code file. Let's save that right here. And I'll run it by pressing F5. Okay, so this lets you take um, any, any um, words that are entered in the Mad Lib. So here I'm going to use that name again. Um, um, 
make it an ad lib, so all of the words that we're going to get from the user contain brackets. This will ask the user for all of those words. It sorts out all of the, creates a list of all of the bracketed words. Great little built in parse function that makes this really easy to do. And of course, it has the uh, built in GUI stuff, which makes it also very easy to do most of these sorts of uh, user interface um, input and output sorts of routines. Let's put this also. and some basic find, match, and um, uh, conditional operations. Um, this uh, demonstrates Rebel can, again, use parse to parse this downloaded um, comma-separated value CSV file. Um, this has no important information in it, that particular file but it is in the format that was uh, actually downloaded from, from PayPal. So I'll just parse, run that directly, and you can see what this particular report did was it went through that, that file. Let's actually get that file, take a look at it. Let's see it in my browser. So it's a big, big old file in the format that you get from PayPal. Um, CSV file that you get, and it's parsing out anything in a in that file which has a date or sorry a time between midnight and noon that's printing out the uh, the eighth item in that column which is the the dollar amount. There are some more examples of these PayPal reports using that file to show how to do things like sums and uh, searches and that sort of thing. All typically just a line or two of code. Just a typical calculator example, first calculator example you'll ever see. Um, the fully working calculator, graphic calculator, which you can use to perform calculations. And, um, let's see how many lines of code that is. That is uh, A little calendar app. Um, again, with the GUI interface, this uses the standard built in um, uh, date picker uh, dialog. Pick a date, type in some things you want to do on that day, save it. So I got to save it as October 7th. See, um, update. We've got this um, particular saved, and uh, the 15th. There we go. And of course, this, this is a real functioning app. It uh, runs if you run the code again. We have all of that data saved, and we can run this again. And uh, if we want to bring this to another machine, we just got a couple lines of code and one little text file here files in Rebel are uh, marked with the percent symbol. So we take those two files, just take this code and that one, one data file to another machine and we can use that uh, on any machine. This little example reads and parses uh, IP address. 
of your computer, and this is actually a little, little tiny rebel script that's running on a web server. Get you your IP address. Uh, so we're going to take the information output there, parse it up, close some of these things, parse it up, and uh, turn that. And then it also reads your local DNS settings, and gets your IP address that way. built in. This is just a little demo to show you some of the image effects that are built in. So I have some random image effects that are built in. And we're going to load an image from control.com and we're going to apply those effects. Whatever selected effect is selected from that text list and apply it to the, um, the image. That. So here's the image that's been downloaded. Apply some of these selected effects. Just a couple lines of code. This little tool, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it in the video, but uh, what it does uh, when you when you put it in, it lets you uh, type in username and password for your FTP server on your site, select any folder, and it will list all of the uh, files in that folder, and you'll be able to click on any of them and edit them and then save them back to the server if you want. So it's an actual very useful uh, FTP tool that you can use to manage files on any FTP server. Again, about uh, five or six lines of code. This little jukebox um, really actually only needs about two lines, but I made a little directory chooser here uh, so I can load files, wave files on any folder. If I want to select another folder, I can go out to another folder if I want and uh, choose another folder. I don't really have any other wave files. But it shows you basically you need one, one line of code here, and this also catches errors if you have any errors. Um, Use that little line that'll open a sound port and insert the wave file into the sound port and play it. A little paint program to draw with the mouse. And to uh, clear it, can and if you want to save it, choose a file name, save it. And if you want to see, let's just take a look at that. Save file. Save on the hard drive. Again, just a couple lines of code. Uh, this little uh, camera stream um, goes out to basically any JPEG camera URL. This is a one that was publicly available, which actually doesn't appear to be up right now. Uh, actually, go ahead. Let's take a look at that again. that comes from there and uh, it's actually giving us a video stream. Let's get moving here. Not much going on in the video, but that's actually a live stream. Picked up and again, that's just a couple lines of code. A little email sender. How much of this one? Most of this is just uh, all your server information, edit that if you want to actually use the program. Just a little GUI app that lets you type in an email, type in a message, and send it. And it tells you what to send when it actually gets sent. Very simple little thing. And you'll see again, you have view layout, there's a little text header, header, a little field with some default text in it, another text header there, a text area labeled A, field is labeled F. And when you click the button, when you click the send button, it sends, creates a, a email uh, value from the uh, field and sends whatever is in the area 
um, to that email, and then it alerts the user that the text has been sent. Really, really simple. This trouble code works like that. It's really, really simple. This is a little text messenger. Um, you run this on two separate machines, two separate instances here. Two of these running, you find your IP address, you can choose to be a server, or you can connect to that server, and then when you type a message in, it appears and this will of course work on a network. Back and forth. There's an example later on. This uses um, TCP IP. But an example later on that uses UDP, so you don't even have to have a server. You can just run this, and anybody on the network can uh, can connect. A little game. This game. Um, so I use the space bar here to go back and forth, and things speed up as you go. Um, let this die, and basically the uh, the way the logic works in this game is uh, once you've let more of uh, the falling rebels drop, then you've caught, the game ends, and you can type in your name, and it comes up with a high score list, and your, your speed. Uh, sorry, lasted for 20 seconds. Uh, and that's actually a sorted high score list, and that's all that's in about, what, nine or ten lines of code. Um, this little app lets you make a uh, just a little graphic app that lets you make um, guitar chord diagrams. So here I'm choosing to put five frets in each of these diagrams. Right, right click on chords here. So if I want to put dots, make a chord diagram. Save that. Hold that a chord. And uh, if I want to right click on that. I can save it. Saves it by the name that you by default saves it by the name that you've given it here. Let's get another chord, a C chord here. And we can put these things back out. Dots in where you need. That. Way better. A way to make chords really easily, and of course, you can adjust the size of this if you want to draw it scale diagrams or anything. Um, I have another little example on, on the uh, getting started tutorial that, sh that has a little extension, a couple more lines, and uh, it will automatically save all the images that you select to a uh, HTML file. Create a nice little presentation in whatever order you want to save those images. But uh, for this example, I want to keep things short. So here's a little image contort example. It takes the built in logo.gif and rebel and contorts it into those positions. So we can do a lot of things with graphics and images uh, directly. This is actually a voice over IP application that will um, it runs basically on Windows machines and it lets you actually send your voice over a uh, network connection. So there's a binary file transfer here and basically what it does is it just records a little bit of a uh, wave file and sends it. it uses uh, one of the built-in Windows DLLs, shared libraries, to to get the uh, recording. But all the networking and all the file sharing is built in. Um, this is going to echo if I do it on a single machine. But uh, you can see here if I want to connect to connect to the local host, I can. Um, and uh, I can echoing back and forth on this machine. And it has some built-in squelch and that sort of thing so that you don't get, uh, uh, if there's really, a, if it gets a recording and doesn't, um, uh, doesn't really get any sound, it won't send it to save some network traffic. There's lots of useful features in there. Again, about uh, 10 lines of code. Um, and here, most of this code is actually just HTML. This is a form server. This is a, a web server. Um, doesn't require Apache or anything else. This is all just pure native Rebel networking. Um, and actually, what I need to do, uh, I have another server running. Shut that down. 
There's a little application running right now. And let's put this in the editor. So this is a file. Run it by pressing F5. Okay, so you can see it figures out your default IP address, your local IP address, and it opens up a browser. This lets you type in. This would be HTML. Um, some things here. Make some selections. And I can see this has been submitted to the server. If we go back to our server, the server is actually getting that information from the browser, whatever it was. Um, sent, and of course you can save that to files or save it to a database. That's a fully st standalone uh, web server application. That will make it very easy to create servers of any kind. And of course most of that code you can see is the HTML that was served. Just a few lines of code again. Uh, this, little, this little thing I use in, in my music business, we uh, Use this to play um, chords. There's, there's some default chords here. You can type in any chords you want, and it plays them with the delay. Then there's a little uh, this little data, and uh, you know, if you want to do something different, let's do that, and it will loop that again with the whatever delay you put in. You can save and load your data files if you want. You can save this to a HST liner and then later on if we want to load it. So there we go. I managed to not save that correctly, but gives you a good idea how the program works. And here's a little 3D example. Rebel does have, and later on in this examples, um, put a demonstration of the R3D program uh, created for the library created by Andrew Hoadley. Uh, this is just pure native uh, Rebel. Um, click on this thing, you can see every time I actually click on the Rebel word, it increases my score, and every time I do that, it makes it go a little faster. This is just all pure rendered. Uh, native rebel um, done with drawing routines. Uh, there's no external library. This little example of how quick the uh, how simple the uh, drawing routines, how powerful they are in, in rebel. Um, here's that little UDP group chat. So again, simple little So this doesn't need a server. You can stick this on a network. You've got a local area network. Um, type in your name and just start typing. And anybody that's um, anybody that's online will just naturally get these. They're connected to the network. No server needed. Um, if you want to see who's online, do that. Control U. It'll set us up. And it dings every time we get a message. Shows that I'm online. This will show. This will send a message out to all of the other uh, users, and anybody that responds will send back their username. And you can save the text of that chat to a text file if you want. So again, I'll, one's maybe more like uh, 15 or 20 lines of code, and maybe more like 20, 20 some. Um, really simple code. These are a couple examples that run on a web server. This will. Um, Show you all the images that are in a given file. Just pop this in your in your web server. I've actually got that running here. So if you go to Rock Factory, um, show you a little example of that. Viewer. So we've got a number of examples 
quickly and displayed. And at the end it gives you a count of all the images that are there. So that runs on the web server. You can do CGI programming and connect with the uh, CGI app in Rebel Code, or you can just use your browser to go to the web page. This one is a little group chat, and there's actually a uh, desktop version of that chat. So you just have to have a little text file on your server. And these two applications, the text uh, chat viewer, the, the actual desktop app, and the, the app that run on the website are interoperable. They both write to that same little text chat. And, uh, so you can see this. Actually, this is not going to connect because I don't have a user and password in there, but um, we'll leave those go because they need to have some password information. There are a bunch of other little little examples here. Um, you know, things that you can do very easily. For example, this will compute the day, number of days between any two selected dates. Go as many times as you want. A couple lines of code again. There's a simple little tip calculator, a lot of these examples in this text that show you how easy it is to create a user interface and pass some information around, do calculations appropriately with various kinds of data. This easily computes um, the difference between two dates. This easily makes computations which are appropriate for money values. Um, it does that sort of thing very easily. It has all those basic real world types of data values built in. A little image slide show. So we'll let you take whatever, uh, take whatever files are in the folder that you select and show you the most of those images we created. You click on the images to continue the slideshow and uh, click on the button to stop it. Here's a simple little CRUD example. It shows how to, there's an example of how you can create, update, read, delete various data. Uh, and this data could be stored on a local hard drive. Here it's in a file called C. You could store this data on a server. Here, let's put some information in. It's supposed to be like a Rolodeck card file. Let's save that. Okay, let's create another one. So a simple little database system. Again, it's about 10 lines of code that gives you everything you need to do typical kinds of database applications with a couple fields of data. Um, and again, a couple more drawing drawing apps. Rebel is fantastic uh, at uh, doing things with not only images, but graphics. It's a little um, drawn 3D cube with some gradients and you know, lighting effects. Um, some more PayPal reports are in here. Um, it's a web page editor. It's a little coin flip example. Uh, I got this from one of the other development tools out there. They have a big long, there's a Glade tutorial that shows how easy it is to uh, to do this sort of thing. And I think their code is you know, maybe several hundred lines long. Um, same code here, about 10, uh, 10 lines of code that you sort of randomly flip and it shows you whether you did heads or tails. So it's just randomly doing a coin flip every time I click that. Very, very simple. You can see I load the images, see the random generator, create a little layout. I have a image uh, widget and I have a little text field widget and a button which says flip. And then it chooses between the uh, random heads and tails and then um, shows the right image. That's all it takes to create an application like that. A little application. Uh, one of the things you'll see uh, in some of my output, I wrote an application for a business that we started with an old Walmart building and turned it into a um, uh, basically a huge flea market 
time. It was one of the biggest flea markets um, in the country. It was 125,000 square feet. We had 175 vendors, and this was a uh, this little tiny um, point of sale thing. It's a very, very, very small prototype, which originally grew into um, the application which we ran. That place was called Merchants Village, and you can find the Merchants Village software online. Here, this just lets us choose. Items, put a price in, and calculates those things for us. Let's decide. Food, for example, here. And it calculates the tax and so on. And we can create that uh, as an invoice. Do another one, and if you want, you can run the little report at the end of the day, and it'll show you how many things have been sold today. How many things have been sold that day. Goes through that the data file saved by the um, point of sale the cash register, and then it performs that little report on it. An interesting little app here. It does uh, creates a jigsaw puzzle from any image that you select, and this actually compares the image uh, to the that you're creating. It, um, let's take this. Let's take the, um, to do. Divide it say, into 16 pieces. And at any point, if we want, we can look at this original image. That's the way it'll look. And we can just move these items around. It's a particularly difficult uh, image to work with here, but as you can see, just a little bit. And at any point, we can see if we've got that image. The way we need it, um, so you get the idea here. And then when that image is correct, let's run this again. And when that image is correct, you'll get a note saying, "Congratulations, it's done." So let's take a look here and see how that's supposed to look. Just a fun little game to play with. Hard to them. Shows you that you finished. So the program in those, it's a little bit longer program. Um, this might be 30 lines, 40 lines at the most. Um, here's a little example of the uh, R3D module that you can use to, um, to do graphics. This, this module loads some of the uh, um, 3D formats. Uh, display and let you render them in various ways. This little example shows you all of the drawing routines that are used. Um, this is slowed down a little bit because I'm actually printing out all of the drawing routines. Um, you can see all the various controls that you have to adjust. Another neat little example that shows you how uh, fast and powerful the built-in graphics are in Rebel. So there are a number of other examples here. Um, this little thing um, prints out uh, chord spellings, parses this list, and prints out nice spellings for all the different types of chords, musical chords. Um, this little tiny example um, uses parse, uh, lets us input a the text, so you see I have some text here, and what the program does is it takes that text and automatically wraps it in uh, an HTML uh, link. So if you run that code, it'll actually create the links for you. I'm getting a couple lines of code. This little program I use uh, almost every day. Um, I use this to share files with people, and so I can give everybody their own little page. And I run this program, it lets me choose any files that I want. Um, so if I go here, I can actually type in my username and password, which I'm going to do now. Um, I can create a uh, page for John, for example, choose whatever files I want, and it will upload those files to the page. It's not going to do it now because I have. Uh, no real site information. Then it brings up an editor, lets you look at the file list that's been put up there. It automatically links all those things. Um, and so it's sort of like a little um, 
uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the company that does this, but the, uh, the company that lets you share files. This is a really simple version of that, and anybody can have their own uh, page instantly. Um, all you need is a folder on a web server somewhere, and uh, incredibly useful, again, just a few lines of code. This little example shows how you use DLLs, you shared files. So this old uh, UPS, United States Post Office, um, USPS Intelligent Mail Encoder downloads this little thing from the website. And you put a tracking number in it that uh, shows you the encoding for that. So it's actually using that DLL to come up with that encoding. Um, this is a little library that I created to help making uh, um, grids easier. You just put the data in, you've got some, you can do sorting, uh, you can resize the columns, it automatically sizes to the, to the um, size of your page, and again, just put the data in a uh, little block here and do the library and, and put your headers in too. Names your headers really easy to display text that way. Some of these are maybe not so interesting to watch. This lets you uh, search for text inside a file and it looks uh, on all the recursively on all the subfolders. Put it down for right now. This little PDF generator. This this is actually a bit of code that was used in Merchants Village um, software, um, and it creates a uh, Printable PDF uh, of any, any data you want. So you can see here, this is just a little bit of the actual PDF dialect code. That PDF dialect was created by um, um, Gabriel Santilli, and this also uses a little bit of uh, the algorithm created by Bo to uh, decode code 39. Uh, barcode info or encode barcode info. Um, so you can see it actually creates a PDF file, opens up the PDF viewer, your default PDF viewer. Um, and if you want to do more of this sort of thing, you can see uh, one of the maybe longer examples. This video is about short examples, but if you look up um, consignment software in Google, uh, somewhere on the first page, you'll see this application. Um, this was in use for a number of years at the business Emergence Village. Um, so we have this free consignment software page. There's also, if you look a little farther, you'll see um, freeconsignmentsoftware.com. That's another site that I have this up at. There we go. Second page there. So on the first and second page, I have a couple entries for these things. This is all written in Rebel. Maybe a good case study if you actually want to see some commercial um, work done in Rebel. We've got a little uh, old uh, um, our source forge page where this is stored. Um, and this little application actually sold many millions of items. We had 175 vendors using this thing and um, they came in and it would print out the uh, barcodes for, it, for them. Um, we had some vendors that were selling literally hundreds of thousands of items, had several thousands of square feet apiece, and uh, you know, did many, many tens of millions of dollars in sales at this place using this little system. Um, it's very well tested and uh, prints out reports. Um, vendors can look online and see the report. This is all pure Rebel code. We had a, quite a few other features in here. You know, I could print checks for all the vendors and actually could do it remotely. Um, I was able to have the employees uh, run a little report. It would print out all the reports showing vendors' detailed sales, and it would pick out any required fees. That, that's how we ran the business. And then uh, it let us um, print checks, which were printed uh, uh, to PDF files. So uh, you could just print those things out directly. Uh, a little layout uh, system allowed us to print to any type of check. Matter where the name and um, date and all that was, I would actually put my signature in it, and I could run that even if I wasn't there. So we could print out hundreds of checks all at once. 
I didn't even need to be on location. There are a lot of little features in that program. So if you go to this uh, free consignment software.com and you can see it's one of the most downloaded applications in that uh, very competitive field. It's all written entirely in, in uh, Rebel. So you can check that out. There are some more places where you can read about this. Uh, in the SourceForge project page has a actual code of a little Git repository here on a, on SourceForge. So you can download. Um, so back to the file. I think we've gone through a lot of the really interesting uh, examples here. A little snake game. This one's sort of obfuscated. This is maybe more like uh, 30 lines of code, but keep the. This is the old game. This is part of an application I put together a long, long time ago that was literally half a page of code and it contained uh, 10 examples. So if you're interested in seeing just how, um, how dramatically concise Rebel code can be, you go to rebel.com. Uh, this is one of the older tutorials. Um, right here in the very beginning, there is a, uh, there's an example. Um, it's literally a half a page. And, oops, uh, literally a half a page, and it contains uh, 10 examples. I think uh, quite a few of which, if not all, were already shown here, but be interesting to see. So we have the freehand paint, snake games, a tile puzzle, founder. Yeah, most of these things were actually already shown. Um, and uh, this prints out to literally be a half a page. Um, somewhere in here. You can see this on page and, and you can just pop this all in. This is the most obfuscated, obfuscated example you can imagine, but it's got all those actual applications that you, that you saw already. All of that in one page, one page of code. Don't think it's possible. And there are actually absolutely no libraries in any of this. Um, this, this is a tutorial that covers uh, quite a bit. Um, if you want to ask questions about Rebel, you can go to rebelforum.com. And uh, this also is a little application this application has a lot of features. I wrote this actually for one of the tutorials, but we end up using it in the community. Um, it's got quite a few features. You can actually get the source for it directly in the application. Um, there's a little uh, API you can connect with um, remotely. There's a little downloader, a little reader. It, this also provides an RSS feed. Um, you can get the code here. You just uh, do this page. The URL of this page directly in the. Um, if you do this URL, you can actually run the application, download the messages, and uh, download the archive messages, for example, and you can read those directly here. So the code for this is actually all contained directly in the in the application itself, and the code for the application itself is also displayed directly here. Um, RSS feeds you can sign up for. Um, I've got another code file example if you want to go to rebel.com forward slash examples that text. There's some more here, quite a few bigger applications. Um, and uh, if you just want to get started, so this, this set of short code examples is listed at the top of the Rebel forum. Um, to really get a, a good quick start, this is a 55 page tutorial that it covers everything about you know the basics of using variables and functions and um, you know, how to use the interpreter itself. It goes through some sort of rote um, crud type stuff. And then there are 20 some examples in here. A lot of the examples that you're looking at actually uh, explains how to do graphics and that sort of thing. And all of these examples explains how to get help also, for example. Rebel has all the built-in help you'll ever need. Once you do this tutorial, it's really everything you need. Um, and uh, these examples are explained line by line, character by character. So by the time you finish this, you should have a good working basic understanding of how 
how to create applications in Rebel. There's a sec second one here too that covers some more advanced stuff. Ports and networking and uh, a bunch of libraries that are available and that sort of thing. And then if you want to go really a lot farther than that, the uh, next example here, so we have the quick starts. These are the ones really that will get you going quickly. And then the book is uh, this is a little tutorial tutorial that's it's about 800 pages actually a really complete book that covers everything uh, that I really use in Rebel um, you know, a lot of the kind of nastier <laughs> low not even low level code but uh, just you know heavier code a lot of solutions there are more than 100 applications that are that are completely uh, taken apart you know, from the ground up first part of this text goes through you know how to how to create applications with Rebel, and then the second half, um, let's see, the, the um, table of contents is really full. Um, we have all these real-world case studies where I go through what the actual thinking was um, to create a lot of these applications from the ground up. So. Uh, the idea of this tutorial is that you know the Rebel is really useful for um, a person like me. Uh, I've been working with computers since I was seven. I'm 43 now, and you know I've used every kind of programming language imaginable throughout the years, and um, everything always seemed a little ridiculous to me. Um, you know, it took forever to create applications. And things like Python are, are really useful, but Rebel is just uh, dramatically productive compared to any of the things that most developers are used to seeing. This is um, the whole point of this video is to show you how, how quickly and easy you can you can create these little kinds of applications. And so it's really useful, even if you're not a developer. It's great if you're a developer and you want to you know create you know, typical like card applications and. Uh, you know, maybe some website apps and things like that, where you just need to run script scripting of any kind. It does most of the you know typical mainstream things that you do with with any sort of programming language much more quickly and easily, um, and it's really approachable by um, by normal people who don't have time to spend a lot of time um, writing code. Um, for me, it has been uh, in, for more than a decade my my main. Um, development platform, and uh, you can see it you know, allowed me to create some businesses. I used this, I used it at uh, Merchants Village uh, to create a really big business. I've used this for for clients all over. Um, there are some big commercial systems running that are created, um, inventory systems, um, and tons of little little apps that I've written for the Rock Factory business, uh, some music lesson instruction business. I've created all these little apps that uh, you know create uh, uh, really nice diagrams and you know play music like that little uh, wave file looper that you saw. Um, all of our scheduling is done with it. All of our communications, uh, rescheduling, um, you know, all the internal operations. You know, we we uh, track you know who was with each teacher. We do all of our all of our um, sales information. Uh, handle all of our all of our operations internally. The teachers know when their new, when their students are there because they sign in, and um, you know, we have these little tons of little apps that let us actually run daily business. And for that sort of thing, you know, the kinds of things that you would uh, maybe use a spreadsheet for, or the kinds of things that you wish you had some sort of special little app that would do one particular thing that manages some sort of activity in your business. And then, if you eventually want to integrate all those things into a larger, you know, application, um, Rebel is just beautiful for managing daily business um, activities and all sorts of typical data management you know, activities. Um, it's extremely powerful. It's really small. It's a half meg to download, um, and uh, you can really get started quickly if you learn this quick start. You spend an hour or so reading that two hours actually going through it in detail, and uh, you have a really good idea of how to create applications in Rebel. Um, you know, Twenty-some applications in one hour, even if you've never written code, um, you can learn how to do that very simply with that little tutorial, and if you want to spend 
a week reading this 800 page book you'll know how to create basically everything that I've ever created with Rebel and it's it's um, really not that hard so if you're a developer and you want to find something that's just dramatically productive compared to you know anything else you've seen um, that was a nice nice tool um, it's very small the newer versions Rebel 3 um, run on Android I use I have a ton of little apps on my phone that have written and there's a another tutorial here it's called uh, learnrebel.com that goes through specifically that version of Rebel um, there are versions for Windows and Linux and um, Android and also um, Raspberry Pi uh, Rebel 3 so if you want to learn how to use Rebel 3 I'd suggest using Rebel 2 first and then just reading this tutorial to see some of the differences um, a lot of similar kind of application examples here but a little, uh, a little more modern looking interface I think on Rebel 3 than on Rebel 2 um, and it runs on those newer platforms a very little difference between the code so if you have questions go to rebelforum.com and uh, take a look through the example apps and see just how easy it is to, to do some of these things